Hello guys and welcome back to another Minecraft Mon tutorial. In today's episode, we're going to be going over how to do a custom chest. So let's get started. This might be a two or three part series, as it's going to involve making the chest itself using container and GUI, as well as a tile entity special renderer. So let's get started with the block today. So we're going to go into block in it and to declare a new block, public static final, block, copper chest, or whatever you want to call it, this can be any type of storage block. This is equal to a new, then block, and then the name of your thing, so block copper chest for me, and then we have to go into declare the name copper chest. So now I've declared the block, we're going to actually create the block class, create the class and put it wherever your blocks are. I have mine in dot blocks in this um, instance, but you might have it somewhere else, like object blocks. And this is going to extend block container. We are then going to declare the constructor and have string name in there. And we are going to declare that the name, we set the unlocalized name to name, set the registry name to name, and then set the creative tab. We also need to super off of the material we're using. So super material and then choose whatever material you want. Since it's copper for me, I'm gonna do metal or iron. You can then also add a few other declarations like hardness, resistance, harvest level, and sound type if you want. Then you need to add this to your list of blocks and your list of items that we've done in the previous blocks and items tutorial. So block in it dot blocks dot add this and item in it dot items dot add a new item block this and you need to make sure that the registry name is set dot set registry name to name. Make sure everything is imported by clicking Control Shift and O. And also, if you want to search for any function like I was doing for item block there, you do control and space. So now we're doing the constructor. There's going to be quite a few functions in this block class. Since we are opening a GUI, we need the onBlock activated function, which is called when you right click on the block. So onBlock activated. If the world is not remote, so use an exclamation mark to say not world in dot is remote then we do player in dot open GUI we get the instance of our mod so main dot instance and then in reference you need to create this um, integer here I accidentally already created it I forgot to remove it from my code earlier but public static final int GUI underscore and then the name of your GUI you want to open. So mine is GUI copper chest. And then since I already have a couple of the GUIs, I declared mine as two. But you can declare this as any number you want as long as it doesn't conflict with other GUIs. So and then where it says mod GUI ID in this open GUI function, put reference dot GUI and then your GUI name. The world here is called world in, and then the x, y, and z are pos.getx, pos.gety, and pos.getz, and return true. It will always return true, as you will always right click on the block. They can never return false, but it can't open the GUI if the world is remote. The next function is the break block function. Since the chest, we need to make sure that all the blocks drop on the floor, well, all the items inside of it drop on the floor whenever we um, break it. Firstly, we need to declare our tile entity. This tile entity we will do in the next tutorial, but tile entity, copper chest, call it tile entity, and it's equal to open brackets, then copy this tile entity copper chest text and put it inside the brackets. Then world in get tile entity 
for the position. This will be underlined red, the tile entity, as we don't actually have this yet. Next, inventory helper dots drop inventory items for the world, the position, and the tile invent tile entity, and then super dot break block as we need to let it run all the normal functions as well. Next inside of this class, we're going to have the onBlockPlaceBy function. And we use this for setting the custom name. So if stack dot has display name, we declare the tile entity, tile entity, tile entity, equals world in dot get tile entity for the position control shift over to import tile entity then another if statement if tile entity is an instance of tile entity copy chest we can copy that again then open brackets twice paste that in there again and then put tile entity dot set custom name to stack dot get display name obviously again this is all going to be red underlined as we do not have um, a tile entity yet talking of the tile entity we need to declare that we have one so create new tile entity return new tile entity copy chest just copy and paste that in there again and then the next function is get render type. All the functions after this are going to be about rendering and the way it looks. And since we are going to have um, the chest opening animation, we need to return enum block render type dot entity block animated. Then there's going to be finally three more functions. Is full block return false is full cube return false the final one is is opaque cube and once again we're going to return false and that is the block class done and sure hopefully all the errors from the block in it should go away obviously the block class will still have some errors though next we need to go into our gui handler and we're going to have to declare a new gui in here so if id is equal to and then the reference um, ID we mentioned earlier by the way if you don't have a GUI handler we created one in the um, furnace tutorial series so you can go and find the GUI video there and you'll see when we created this then we are going to return a new and then we're going to this is um, in server you declare the container element and in the client you declare the GUI itself so container, uh, copper chest, we'll come back to the parameters in there in a minute. And then copy this, paste it into client, and change it to GUI copper chest. In this episode, we're going to create in the container. So let's get started on that. Create that, and I'm gonna put it in dot blocks, dot container. It's going to extend container from net.minecraft.inventory and we are going to need to declare a couple of things an integer called private final int num rows referring to the number of rows in the chest and also um, private final and then the tile entity again tile entity copper chest and that's the chest inventory we are then going to open up the container copper chest and in here, we need the player's inventory from inventory player. We need the chest inventory from the tile entity, which we can just copy and paste from the variable. And we need the entity player itself. We need to declare that this dot chest inventory is equal to chest inventory. So that the variable is equal to the um, variable inside of the constructor. 
This dot num rows is equal to chest inventory divided by nine. You should always keep your chests um, in rows of nine as I came into some graphical glitches when trying to do it wider than nine. And then at the start of this constructor, we need to open up the chest inventory. Chest inventory dot open inventory for the player. We then need to add all the slots. So for int i equals zero, um, i is less than the number of rows plus plus i, then the number of columns for int j is equal to zero. j is less than nine. As I said, we always need to keep this at nine plus plus j. This is two for loops that's going to go and create all of the um, slots. So then this dot add slot to container a new slot chest inventory as this is going to be the chest inventory slots j plus i times 9 8 plus j times 18 18 plus i times 18 and that is all the slots um control shift do to import slot net dot minecraft to inventory to slot and that should make that error go away if you've um, watched the furnace tutorial you can copy all the inventory slots from the previous um, tutorials but for everyone new here i'm going to go and write them down again so for int y equals zero y is less than three y plus plus for int x equals zero x is less than nine x plus plus this dot add slot to container new slot in the player inventory we have x plus y times nine plus nine eight plus x times 18 and then 175 plus y times 18 at least in my uh, GUI it's like that you might need to change a couple of if you hover over slot you can see x position and y position you might have to change a few of those added um, numbers on there to make your slots align with your GUI but we'll mess around with that in the next episode then finally the hotbar for int x equals 0 x less than 9 x plus plus this dot as slot to container a new slot in the player inventory x 8 plus x times 18 and then for me it's just a normal number of 233 again you might have to move this number around to make it align and that's all the slots added there's a couple more functions in the container here firstly can interact with we call a function the tile entity obviously we haven't created that yet but return this dot chest inventory dot is usable by player and then the player in then on container close keep the super but then below that we also need chest inventory dot close inventory player in and then finally transfer stack in slot this is a bit different to the furnace one but I will leave it all in the description that you can copy and paste in as it's quite long so there it is control show copy item stack import item stack basically it goes through and sees if it can um, move any of the slots in or out from your inventory or the chest and make sure that the um, certain items merge with the other ones in the chest when you add them into the chest and the final one is a public tile entity copper chest called get chest inventory just return this sort of chest inventory and that is the container done this is where i'm going to end this video so i'm going to explain what we've done here today we have created the block and this block here has its own tile entity we've declared that it's animated so we can go on to create the tile entity special renderer in the, maybe the next episode maybe the episode after that depending on how long it takes and we've said that it's not going to be a full block We've made sure that when we break the block, all the um, items drop on the ground, and that when we right click on it, we open the GUI. Um, over in the GUI here, 
actually one last thing we can do here. We'll add the um, so we'll put player dot inventory tile entity copper best world dot get tile entity. Or oh, sorry, a new block pos x y z and then player itself. It's saying it's got an error here because it doesn't know what tile entity copper chest is. We'll click that next. But here it's seen when. Um, we right click on this GUI and it sees the reference of GUI copper chest. It's going to come to the GUI handler and it'll see these two. So it'll open the container that we've just created and the GUI that we'll create in the next episode. And in the container, we've created all of the slots where our inventory is going to go. I've made mine 9 by 8, but actually I can make it as big as I want because we have this num rows thing here. All depends on what number we put inside of the chest inventory. This here should actually be dot get um, size inventory divided by nine. Um, so we're getting the size of this inventory here, which we can change to any number, and then it will divide by nine and figure out how many rows. But I've designed the GUI to fit eight um, eight rows and nine columns. So we have all of those that in this function here, and this is the normal player inventory. And we've set up a system where that when we um, shift click some items into the chest, it will merge with any other items that are in the chest already. So unfortunately, we're going to have to end this episode here as it's getting quite long. We will come back and fix all these errors in the next episode. So thanks for watching. My name's been Harry and goodbye.